and the differentiation in the temperatures and things between those creates neutron pulse, which is the up of the ante on this particular problem. And what the neutron pulse is, it's a neutron bomb. It's a neutron pulse weapon. And that uh, those neutrons can travel 250 miles. When I was investigating Fukushima and the damage to other reactors and other plants, I discovered that Fukushima was one of four plants that had uh, released large amounts of radiation or had other kinds of damage. The damage was caused by the earthquake, not the tsunami. And the damage was to the fuel pools. The reason that the reactors melted and the fuel pools where the spent fuel was stored, those caught on fire, releasing huge volumes of radioactive smoke with those 2,000 radionuclides that I was talking about. And those have traveled all over the world. And as time goes on, those levels will increase, the damage will increase, and the entire infrastructure of this planet is now in a process of decay and disintegration, everything. And that includes the biosphere, all living things as well. It's, it's uh, the dance of entropy. It's, it's universal. Entropy is the universe. So we are in, a, in an accelerated uh, state of our entire world disintegrating. And the, um, the effects are very, very, very serious. And they will be more and more apparent as time goes on. Bridges collapsing, buildings falling down. Um, it, it's, um, it's very serious. And the reason we're doing this interview is to inform people and warn people and educate people so that they can uh, do their own research. They can take measures they need to take. Flying is something people need to uh, consider very carefully before they get into an airplane now. And there are crew members and pilots who are dropping dead like flies. So uh, that's also an issue. I recommend, I think we all recommend that people not fly unless they absolutely have to. Tonight at 10. In preparation for takeoff, please fasten your seatbelts, relax, and enjoy the flight. Planning to fly this summer? Prepare for a bumpy ride. Everything just flew out of everybody's hands. The plane dropped, I don't know, 20 feet or something. I've never felt so helpless in my life. The captain has turned on the seatbelt sign. Please take We your reveal seat. the reasons why flights will be bumpier and the cause for turbulent skies. Tonight at 10 on KCAL 9 News. Perhaps now's the time for just uh, the beginnings of some of the historical context on all of this. You have to understand that this isn't happening because of uh, some series of just incredible coincidences, uh, oh, accidents, no. oversights. You have to understand that this is actually orchestrated. It's, it's part of a program that that's a, a bit older than most of the people who are watching this right now. If you want to take a look back to its more immediate roots, then you're going to take a look back to the 20th century, most of it. And what you're going to take a look at is uh, eugenics, and uh, you're going to take a look at some lectures that were done. And these were done over in London. These are done to the uh, Royal Society, or the yeah, the Royal Society of London. Of London. Bertrand Russell, ladies and gentlemen, is who you'll want to look up. And what you're looking for are his lectures. They were published in 1954. And um, The Impact of Science on Society. That's the one. What yeah. a lovely volume. We do have it posted mm -hmm. on the website. Mm -hmm. You will want to take a look at this because what it is is it is the outline 
that explains how all of these incredible events are sewn together and what it is that their intended outcome is for it. Now, the law of unintended consequences comes in and it's just going to hammer these people because they really haven't thought this through. They're kind of, even for long-term thinkers, and they are very long-term thinkers, they, they're a little short-sighted. There are, are certain things about the spirit and about mankind that they have kind of overlooked. And, their misunderstanding of what the human genome actually is is just staggering. And so they have a program of eugenics and all of these things up to and including these neutron pulse machines with fuses of various lengths, which are presently running. These are your nuclear power stations throughout the world. And um, there are countries that are still considered to be developing. It's a, a cycle of boom and bust and right now the boom is happening in China and the guarded boom the enlightened boom is happening over in Russia and we'll see whether or not they're able to protect themselves but as far as the overview to why these events are happening why planes are being compromised why Fukushima is just the tip of an iceberg that is much much more dangerous and yet is in the process of creating an entropic environment such that you have to come out of the gate. I mean, at birth, you have to start defending yourself from this. And your mother had better be defending you from it while you're being created. What they're trying to do is they're trying to do away with any kind of free-range procreation. They're trying to bring it inside of their laboratories. And at the rate that they're going, they may succeed, though I doubt it. We'll see. But we can get back to the actual immediate impacts now. It was just a question of putting some of this in context. So I think what we wanted to talk about were the indicators that were correlates to these studies, and these indicators are occurring in glass. Now, unlike metal, which is a crystal, the underlying fundamental structural difference is glass is not. Glass is a liquid, and Lorraine can tell you all about this. Yes. Glass does not have a crystalline structure. Uh, the composition is SiO2, silicon with two oxygens attached to it. That's a molecule uh, that is in glass unless there are other things added to it, trace, traces of other elements. So glass is a supercooled liquid. If it had a crystalline structure, it would be harder to um, to use in the ways they use it for lenses, for windows, for all kinds of things. And a uh, supercooled liquid means that they melted it. Uh, basically, uh, SiO2 in nature as a crystal is quartz. And so what they've done is they've taken a whole lot of quartz sand, melted it, and poured it into different forms or rolled it out or whatever they do to it to make whatever they want to produce. And um, because it doesn't have a crystalline structure, it's below its melting point in our normal environment. And so it quenches into a supercooled liquid that seems like it's a solid, but it's not. It's just below its freezing point, basically. And um, it's used uh, in uh, treating as a technology to, to store nuclear waste. And so they will melt it, silicon dioxide, they will liquefy it, add the radioactive nuclides, the nuclear waste to it, mix it all up, and then they pour it in big drums. And in Europe, uh, especially the British, I think the French have also done that, they're throwing it overboard into the ocean, the drums of glass uh, or vitrified, vit the vitri vitrification process. But over time, it decomposes from the energy released uh, by the uh, radioactive materials from the nucleus. 
but I'm looking through my notes here for um, for all the glass examples I have. The damage. Fly, and there's there's just so many I don't even know yes. like where to start. But we we had a number of incidents that occurred from the Kadena Air Force Base in Japan. That's right. This is right <clears> in the <throat> beginning when we started collecting articles and news uh, stories about problems with airplanes. And one of the earliest ones, I believe you sent it to me, was uh, problems with, with older fighter jets that were used for training at the Kadena military base in Japan, in, in Okinawa. And I've actually been there. I have stood up above the runway and watched uh, CIA rendition jets taking off with no markings on them, headed straight for Asia, probably Afghanistan. And um, what what caught my attention is the fact that uh, Okinawa is quite to the south, uh, down by Taiwan from uh, Japan, but it is a part of Japan. And there are, I believe, uh, 14 military bases. There are a lot of military bases, and 25% of the land is in U.S. military bases. So the story came out that um, a jet, a fighter jet, a pilot was being trained in it, uh, landed without the windshield. And uh, then the story mentioned that 10 uh, fighter jets had already had pieces flying off the airplane in flight. And, uh, and it turned out that there were actually four more fighter jets that had lost their windshields in flight. <clears throat> so these pilots have contained air and they have helmets and so forth and so on. Um, they had to land their jets without any windshields on them. And it's actually the frame, which is made out of thin metal, that the glass is uh, held uh, or attached to the, the cockpit with. And that's where the problem was. And that's the Wigner effect. It attacks uh, thin metal uh, much faster than um, than. Uh, thicker metal or stronger parts. And so where the fuselage is, where you have thin metal, where um, uh, the um, crimp, the hoses, uh, the rubber hoses, like in the landing gear, hydraulics, are crimped on with thin pieces of metal onto the heavier metal fitting, uh, which um, carries the fluids through the pipes metal pipes. Uh, it's those places that are very susceptible to Wigner damage. And that's why there are so many problems with landing gear. Um, at the same time that happened in Kadena, there was a fighter jet uh, reported in Russia that could not get the front landing gear down in time to land. But he did have rear landing gear, which was down so he had to land on the rear landing gear and <laughs> sort of fly down the runway on those rear rear wheels uh, until the speed of the plane uh, lowered to uh, a, a point where the um, airlift did not support, hold the plane up anymore. And so it skidded down the rest of the runway on the belly. 